Paul starts by being a model himself. He tells us that he has forfeited his rights for Christ's sake. He's not demanding his own rights here. He said, in fact, I've given them up. Here's how he describes himself twice. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus. He describes himself not as a prisoner of Rome, even though it's Rome that has control over him. He describes himself as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. He is in jail because of his faith. He is limited in his movement because of his faith. And he's identifying himself as a willing prisoner, in a sense, as a slave of Jesus Christ. Saying, I don't have any rights. I've given them up. And now he's asking Philemon to follow that pattern. It's obvious that Paul has talked at length without, with Onesimus about his role in all of this. He has helped Onesimus to see his faults. He has convinced Onesimus, you can't go forward in your faith until you're willing to make reconciliation with the man that you wronged. You have to do this. And now he's writing this letter to Philemon to prepare the way. And as he does that, he shows his appreciation. He affirms Philemon in appropriate ways. He affirms his love for people and his faith for Jesus. Philemon is portrayed very positively in these few short verses, both as a human and as a Christian. Paul affirms him as a partner in the greater cause of the work of the gospel. He says, Philemon, you have made and you are making very valuable contributions. He honors him and lifts him up. He affirms his ability to refresh the hearts of God's people. Apparently Philemon has been exercising gifts of encouragement and hospitality. And Paul knows that. I don't think he's just buttering up here. He's letting him know that he is a valued person. And that he is mature in his faith. And Paul is going to call on that now. It's interesting that Paul bases his appeal not on status but on love. Love in all of its dimensions. He could have played the apostle card. He could have said, Philemon, I know you're important, but I'm the apostle Paul here. I have a right to demand this of you. But he says, I'm not doing that. I'm doing it on the basis of love. Paul and Philemon love each other as brothers. But now Paul and Onesimus, the runaway slave, also love each other as brothers. And Paul says, think about this. I love Jesus, Philemon, you love Jesus, and Onesimus loves Jesus. That's the foundation, that's the starting point for what I'm asking of you. Paul acknowledges that there are emotions involved, but he knows that those emotions can't be foundational. Paul has very strong feelings about Onesimus' value as a Christian. This former slave has been very helpful to Paul. He knows that Philemon has very strong feelings about Onesimus on a negative side because of what Onesimus has done for him. He says, we've got to work through this to reconciliation. As Paul writes, he says, Philemon, I'm seeking voluntary cooperation from you. I'm not trying to force this on you. I don't want to demand it of you. I want you to willingly accept Onesimus back as an equal, as a brother in Christ. I want you to see him as the new person that he is. In fact, he says, what I'd really like is for you to voluntarily set him free so that he can come back to me. You don't have to do that. You're not under any legal obligation. But see him for who he now is. See, Paul can see God's hand at work even in the brokenness here. It's Onesimus' wrongdoing that led him to flee to Rome. And while he's in Rome, he crosses paths with Paul. And he becomes a Christian. So Paul writes to Philemon and says, step back and look at this. See God's hand in all of this. God is being at work here. And Paul acknowledges the importance of restitution. He says, yes, he took from you. He owes you. 
The debt has to be paid. I'm willing to pay it on his behalf since he can't. But you deserve to be given back what was taken from you. And then Paul challenges Philemon to be obedient to God. He says, Philemon, you're mature enough in your faith to know that the right thing to do is to forgive this former runaway. To forgive this man who has wronged you. It's the right thing to do for his sake, but it's also the right thing for you to do with, for your sake. You can't continue to harbor grudges or resentment against him because it's only going to harm you. What does all this teach us about restoring broken or strained relationships? I think there are several steps here that we can learn from. And one is that there's a process involved. Reconciliation of something that's been broken takes time, it takes hard work, it takes emotional investment. We would like it to be a quick fix. Oh, I'm sorry I did that. Okay, you're forgiven, go on our way. And sometimes that's the way we deal with it, and it never really gets dealt with. Nothing changes because we haven't engaged in the process. We've just been flipping about it without acknowledging what's really going on. What's so important for us to learn from the Apostle Paul is that our, quote, rights are always subject to Christ's rule in our lives. In this sense, it can be very helpful for us to see ourselves as prisoners of Christ Jesus. Because when we're a prisoner, when we're a slave, we don't have rights. And in this case, God gets to call the shots. God gets to be in control over all of our actions and our attitudes and our decisions with his guidance. And we fight up against that because we think we do have rights. But the rights we demand come out of our own self-centeredness. We want our way. We want to be validated. We've been wrong. We want to wrong the other person in return. We want to be in control. We want to have the last word. We want to say how everything works out. And if we were able to step back out of the situation and look at it, and it was somebody else, we'd say, you know, they're being pretty self-centered there. It's all about them. That's what Paul is modeling here. He said, I'm a prisoner. I've given up my rights. And I'm not fighting that. I'm doing that voluntarily. Giving everything over to the control of Jesus Christ. Because we are really free. We are only free when we do what God calls us to do. As long as we're calling the shots, it can't work out right. It's only when we turn it over to God and follow His ways that Christ can free us from ourselves, free us from our own nature. Free us from that self-centeredness that gets in the way. What we also see here is that we must take the right steps regardless of how the other person responds. Onesimus is willingly going back to Philemon before he knows whether Philemon's going to accept him or not. I am responsible for my actions, not for the other person's reactions. I have to be in control of my actions. I can't be in control of the other person's reactions. That's so important for us to understand and it's so free. Because once I understand the only person that I'm responsible for in this relationship is me, then I'm free to focus on me. Then I'm free to ask God to change me. Then I can quit praying for God, as we usually do, to change the other person and say, God, what you do with that person is between you and them. Make me your son, your daughter. Make me your prisoner. Change me until I am willing to do everything that you ask me to do 